Crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a video for you with two stenciled cards. These stencils were gifted to me by an Etsy seller. He um, initially asked if I was interested in them and I thought that they had some images that I would really like to use and I thought that they were a great deal. So I only try to say yes to those sort of things if it's something that I genuinely am interested in using and think that um, you guys would enjoy. So it's a set of 36 stencils and as you can see a wide variety of different kinds of stencils for about $25. So a really good deal there and I particularly liked the animal stencils and there was a stencil set that included um, some like artsy things and so those are the two that I'm going to use today. I wanted to use the frog because it made me think of the Create a Smile stamp set on Frog Gettable and so I knew I would have a easy sentiment to finish it off but you could of course pick your favorite animal, there's also some uh, fun seashells there, to do a similar card with. So if you have a stencil like this where there's a lot going on and you only want a small piece of it versus like a background stencil where you want to use the whole thing, you can take some painter's tape and cover all of the elements around it. Now initially I thought, oh well, it would have the side benefit of letting it stick down to the paper as well because the tape would go through those large open areas and that would hold it to the card. But I realized that that would not be a great idea because the areas that have the stickiness, the tape to it, will also pull up a little bit of ink each time and then transfer it down as I move the stencil around. So I decided to put tape on both sides of the stencil around the element that I wanted to use. This initially felt a little bit wasteful as I'm using a lot of tape to do it, but I know that I will reuse this tape multiple times as I do any tape. So even though I'm taking it right off the roll here, when I'm finished with it, I'll be able to wipe off the ink and reuse this for you know, uh, taping down other stencils or taping down things in my die cut machine, taping down the paper, et cetera, et cetera. I am using a ink dauber to apply the ink, but you could use the Tim Holtz foam blending tools or stencil brushes, it's up to you. I just felt like the finger dauber gave me some pretty good control and again I know that I can reuse them. You can rinse them out and change the colors or you can just have the same one green one for all of your different colors of green ink. I'm using Distress Oxide ink throughout this video just because I think it gives nice even coverage and it blends well if I did want to blend two colors together but I think you could use pretty much any ink out there. You could use a pigment ink or a dye ink because all I'm really doing is coloring these solid. You could of course use the stencil in a more traditional way of basically drawing around it with a marker and then filling it in. So whatever you have on hand, you could recreate a similar card. Initially, I wanted the idea of the frog sort of hopping across the card, but when I get to the end of the diagonal, the card just still felt a little bit empty, so I'm going to wind up covering a whole half of the card with it, but I am trying to keep in mind that my frogs should extend off of the edges of the card to give it a greater sense of movement. So with my very first frog, I made sure that he hung off a little bit there at the bottom, and I'll make sure the same is true of my top frog, and then as I fill more frogs in, I'll continue to do that. If you felt like it was hard to fit your stencil element together, like I'm going to sort of fit these in and create my own pattern paper of sorts here, you could pick a smaller coordinating thing and use that to fill in some of the spaces. So if you feel like there's like awkward gaps but you can't add another frog or whatever animal you're, you know, element you're choosing, using another small element would work well and I think that in this ridiculously huge awesome 36 pack you would find some something else that would uh, fit in there but there's like a whole there's a couple of flourish stencils in the pack and a couple of um, I want to say like maybe it's just one but there's one with like leaves and elements and stuff like that on it too so those would be my recommendation there's an alphabet one with a little heart that always fills in things or a star and so I'll just keep going until I generally feel like this bottom half here is covered and that includes making even little teeny tiny like or just adding a foot or the tip of his nose 
to get everything covered up. I am moving around the tape that holds it down as I go just because I don't want the tape to be laid over any of the frogs because they might not be dry yet. Distress Oxide ink does have a bit of a pigment to it and so it can take a tiny bit longer to dry than some other inks. So here's that Create a Smile stamp set I mentioned before and I'm going to use the sentiment on Frog Gettable. I'm going to stamp this in a little bit darker of a green. So I'm using mowed lawn for the stamping and I use twisted citron for the frogs. So if you guys see, there's actually like a little grouping of four frogs there at the top left and there's a little bit of space in between them. There's actually kind of two spots of that. That's where you could add that extra element if you wanted and it would add an extra color that might be nice. So I did also die cut that out with my cat scrappiness distressed edge rectangles. I love cat's rectangles. Um, I use the distressed edge one a ton and the scalloped one a lot. They just like, especially the distressed edge, like whenever I do anything with like nature or animals, I really think that that just adds just a little interesting touch along the edge. So for my next card, I wanted to show you how even though you're covering all this area with tape, if you want to switch between colors, you don't actually need to redo the tape. That even though the color is getting all over that tape there, this painter's tape, if you use a very lightly damp cloth, you can wipe it off. I'm actually just using my Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois and it's just barely wet and I can wipe off the ink and then move to my next color quite quickly. I just have to have separate daubers for each one. You could of course actually wash those out too, but I find that having one for each color family is a good idea and saves me a lot of time in my crafting. So the Distress Oxide inks that I'm using to create my rainbow here are Twisted Citron, Wilted Violet, Salty Ocean, Picked Raspberry, Mustard Seed, and Carved Pumpkin. And I'll just switch through those in color order, uh, rainbow color order. I thought about using a red in my rainbow, but for some reason it just never appeals to me as quite as much as a pink in, in a rainbow. Um, but I know there's like other people who really leave the, who tend to leave the purple off a lot even in a rainbow. So I think there's all these like versions and personal preferences about what makes a, a rainbow. But um, anyway, I want my pens to line up perfectly and it's doing that quite easily because I have this grid paper underneath. So each time I'm moving my stencil over by the same number of little squares on my grid paper. You could of course use a grid mat as well, a small piece of graph paper. You could draw some lines on a piece of paper with a ruler so that you could easily move it down the same amount each time. I would ordinarily use some other sort of reusable thing rather than paper constantly, but I just like the way that the white paper reflects the light and therefore just films a little bit better. It just makes the whole thing a little bit brighter when I'm filming. So now that I have my rainbow of pens there in the corner, I'm going to trim that down a bit and put a black mat around it. I love the look of a black mat around something with rainbow. I just think that that little bit of black helps the rainbow pop. And then I'm going to use a rainbow related sentiment from MFT. I did find that this particular scent rainbow sentiment set isn't still available, but of course you could use any number of sentiments. It wouldn't even have to be a rainbow sentiment. I just like rainbows and rainbow things. So I've have a few rainbow sentiment sets on hand. I'm also using a stamp positioner tool because with this particular set, you can put the word rainbow or rainbows in between a lot of sentiments. So they're not actually attached. It's not one whole sentiment. Instead, you have to stamp it in there. So I chose to phrase it as sending you a rainbow of wishes. And that is it for my video today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to the products mentioned in the video description below. Additionally, there'll be a link to my Crafty D Stash page in case you're interested in picking up some gently used craft projects at a good bargain. And thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.